how you can normalize hypertension with a low-carb, high-fat diet. High blood pressure, also known as hypertension, is a prevalent health problem that may not always have noticeable symptoms, but is a crucial risk factor for severe medical conditions like heart attacks and strokes. Hence, it is crucial to be aware of your blood pressure readings, comprehend their significance, and be aware of possible measures to manage high blood pressure. The good news is that while medications are often necessary to help manage hypertension, simple modifications in lifestyle can also often reduce high blood pressure. Moreover, adopting such lifestyle changes can add in weight loss and enhance overall healthiness. The following content aims to present evidence-based information and provide resources for naturally regulating blood pressure. Should hypertension be medicated? The American Heart Association, AHA, guidelines categorize hypertension based on blood pressure readings. Blood pressure measurements above 120 over 80 are considered elevated, while a systolic pressure between 130 to 139, or a diastolic pressure of 80 to 89, is stage 1 hypertension, and a systolic greater than 140 or diastolic greater than 90 is stage 2 hypertension. Today, almost 50% of the U.S. population is diagnosed with high blood pressure. But that does not necessarily imply that everyone requires medication. Observational studies indicate that health risks start to rise as blood pressure readings enter the elevated blood pressure category. Therefore, it is advisable to maintain blood pressure within the normal range. However, the question remains, what is the optimal way to achieve this? Our recommendation is to regulate blood pressure through lifestyle changes, as opposed to relying solely on medication. Causes of high blood pressure If someone is diagnosed with high blood pressure, they should seek medical attention to determine if there is a treatable or harmful cause, known as a secondary cause, which makes up about 5-10% to of cases. Secondary causes can include kidney or endocrine disorders, sleep apnea, vascular abnormalities, certain medications, or supplements. On the other hand, the most common type of high blood pressure is essential hypertension, which usually does not have a clear cause. It is known that certain factors increase the likelihood of developing essential hypertension. These factors include being overweight, not getting enough physical activity, excessive alcohol intake, smoking, stress, family history, and genetics. The link between obesity and high blood pressure is of particular interest, as research suggests that around 70% of the risk for primary hypertension is related to obesity. This is especially true for weight gain around the waist, which is associated with the accumulation of fat in and around abdominal organs, such as the liver, and can also lead to insulin resistance. Weight gain triggers hormonal changes within the kidneys, adrenal glands, and other areas of the body that contribute to hypertension. Furthermore, obesity activates the sympathetic nervous system, which also influences blood pressure. Finally, obesity is linked to insulin resistance, glucose intolerance, abnormal lipid levels, and inflammation, all of which can contribute to high blood pressure. Lifestyle Changes for a Healthier Blood Pressure 1. Diet When abdominal obesity and hypertension occur with other cardiovascular disease risk factors, it is known as metabolic syndrome. Recent research indicates that reducing the intake of sugars and starches, carbohydrates, in the diet can help improve metabolic syndrome and hypertension. Multiple trials have shown that low-carb, high-fat diets are even more effective than low-fat diets in terms of weight loss and reducing cardiovascular risk markers. Individuals who switch to a low-carb, high-fat, or ketogenic diet often experience a quick reduction in blood pressure. According to a VIRTA study in 2018, Individuals who followed a low-carb, high-fat diet saw a significant decrease in diastolic blood pressure of around 11.5% and were even able to discontinue their high blood pressure medications. 
Although research in this area is ongoing, several mechanisms have been suggested, including weight loss, lower insulin levels, improved insulin sensitivity, reduction in sodium retention by the kidney, and lower blood sugar. This approach has shown success in both scientific studies and anecdotal reports. 2. More or less salt Consuming less salt may only lead to a slight decrease in blood pressure. Even though there have been several trials that show a reduction in blood pressure with a low-sodium diet, we still don't have conclusive evidence to prove that lowering salt intake will reduce the risk of heart disease or death. Moreover, it is not clear whether sodium reduction is as important as increasing potassium, as some studies suggest that the ratio of sodium to potassium intake is a better predictor of cardiovascular disease and death than either nutrient alone. Most of the salt that we consume comes from fast food, processed meals, bread, and soft drinks. Consequently, most low-carb diets automatically reduce salt intake because they avoid these foods. That means that you can safely add salt to taste on a ketogenic diet. Also, when starting a low-carb, high-fat diet, insulin levels tend to rapidly decrease, which is believed to be a main reason why blood pressure drops on a low-carb diet. In conclusion, observational studies suggest that moderate salt intake, between 3,000 and 7,000 milligrams per day, is not associated with increased risk of heart attack or death, while very low or very high intake may increase risk. Ultimately, if following a low-carb diet, it's safe to consume salt in moderation, 4 to 7 grams of sodium per day, or about 2 teaspoons of salt. Three. Cut out other factors for increased blood pressure. Avoiding certain substances and habits can help lower blood pressure. Some common causes of high blood pressure include medications like oral contraceptives, decongestants, NSAIDs, and stimulants used to treat ADHD. Consuming large amounts of coffee or alcohol, smoking, using smokeless tobacco, using certain herbal supplements, and using recreational drugs like methamphetamines and cocaine can also raise blood pressure. While it is not necessary to completely eliminate coffee or alcohol, it may be wise to reduce their intake. Alcohol can be considered as an ultra-fast carbohydrate and its consumption leads to a dramatic and immediate increase in blood sugar levels. Quitting smoking is always a good idea, as it not only benefits blood pressure, but also overall health. 4. Exercise Regular physical exercise can have a significant impact on managing blood pressure. Although exercise can cause temporary increases in blood pressure, it has a modest long-term lowering effect on blood pressure. Engaging in regular exercise not only helps to reduce blood pressure, but also lowers the risk of mortality and many other chronic health conditions. In 2019, a comprehensive review of nearly 400 randomized trials involving approximately 40,000 patients found that exercise was as effective as antihypertensive drugs in treating hypertension. 5. Intermittent Fasting from a mechanistic perspective, intermittent fasting can help reduce insulin levels and promote weight loss, which can in turn improve blood pressure. Some studies have found that intermittent fasting is associated with a decrease in systolic blood pressure. Combined with a low-carb, high-fat ketogenic diet, intermittent fasting is a great option to consider. 6. Monitoring Monitoring your blood pressure regularly is important to track changes and ensure that your lifestyle changes are having a positive effect. It's also important to discuss any changes with your doctor and bring your home blood pressure monitor with you to the doctor's office for comparison readings. Take care of your body. It will pay off.